أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بيض بركة سيدي الشيخ سيدي محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله صرة Notes from Mudhakara of March 20, 2024, Part 3 Before starting this video, I would like to say that this work would never have seen the light without CD Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from CD Shaykh. In this part of the lecture, CD Shaykh spoke about the Divine Light and said, Iman. The Prophet wasallam said in a hadith, Indeed, Allah, the Blessed and Exalted, created his creation in darkness. Then he cast his light upon them. So whoever is touched by that light is guided, and whoever is not, he goes astray. It is for this reason that I say that the paths have dried with Allah's knowledge. Sidi Sheikh said that the creation was in darkness, means that they cannot see each other. One cannot see even himself and his body. Then Allah cast his light upon them. And in another version of the hadith, Allah threw his light upon them. Whoever is touched by that light is guided, and whoever is not, he goes astray. There is neither increase nor decrease. The pen has right. This means that the guidance is from the light of Allah Azza wa Jal, and darkness is from oneself and from a tabood. Sidi Shaykh referred to the verse, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah is the wali of those who believe. He brings them out of the darkness into the light. Allah made himself and his wali as a guardian for the believers to bring them out of the darkness into the light. In the rest of the verse, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, But as for those who disbelieve, their awliya are tabood, they bring them out from the light into darkness. The disbelievers, al-Kuffar, are those who have known the truth and did not recognize it, for a reason or another. Maybe they feel lose of their social status or their wealth, Thus, they deny this reality. The Kafir knows the oneness of Allah, recognizing him as Wahid, Fard, and Samad. He acknowledges the Prophet as the Messenger of Allah, yet he refuses to accept this reality and chooses to conceal it. The one who got this denial is the Tahut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 14 of Surah Al Hujurat, Say, You have not believed, Amanna, but say, We have submitted, Aslamna, for faith has not yet entered your heart. One can claim to be a Muslim, but cannot claim to be a believer, until Allah enters faith in his heart. It means that the place of faith is the heart, while actions such as prayer, fasting, and performing good deeds remain within the context of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned faith, Iman, with its six pillars, which are to believe in Allah, his angels, his divine revelations, his prophets, the day of resurrection, and faith, al-Qadr. Yet, in another hadith referenced by Ibn Abbas, faith is defined as a light that Allah casts in the heart of the believer's servant. It increases and decreases with good deeds. It means that the more one engages in good deeds, the closer he draws to this light, and Allah fills his heart with light. Conversely, the more one neglects good deeds, the farther he strays from the light, causing it to diminish until it may disappear altogether. If the hadith and the verse are associated, entering faith into the heart would be equivalent to entering light into the heart. Sidi Shaykh added that Islam has three stations, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Everyone perceives Islam according to his own station. One may perceive it as simply practicing the five pillars of Islam, such as praying and fasting. Another may understand Islam to include not only the five pillars, but also the six pillars of faith. The highest level is to perceive Islam as encompassing the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of faith, and the station of excellence, which is to worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you do not see Him, then know that He sees you. If one denies the light, he denies the station of Iman, and if one denies his worship to Allah, he denies the station of Islam. The witnessing of the example of the divine light is equivalent to what Sayyidina Musa السلام, who is a prophet and a messenger asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala My Lord, reveal yourself to me so I may see you. 
God said to Musa that he cannot see him and told him to make the mountain as an intermediary. When his Lord appeared to the mountain, he leveled it to dust and Musa السلام, collapsed unconscious. This means that seeing through an intermediary is possible. If it was not possible, Allah would only say to Musa, you cannot see me and would not tell him about the mountain. Sidi Shaykh also referred to hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he was asked, have you seen your Lord? He said, I see light. The one who asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wanted a description, but Allah is above every description. So the Prophet gave him an approximation using the attribute of Allah, which is the light, to understand the secret of witnessing the maker, al-bari, subhanahu wa azza wa jal. Even if one denies the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nur, Allah, Nur. If one denies all this, it means that he is not seeking to search, contemplate, and find a solution for oneself. He has a preconceived idea in his head to which he clings, refusing to accept input from anyone else. Therefore, this is not destined for him. Sidi Shaykh added that in the past, people were always searching for the light of Islam, the light of Iman, the light of Ihsan, the light of the Qur'an and the light of the prayer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The prayer is light. As for now, the word light has become as if it's a figurative expression. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Beware of the believer's intuition, Basira, for he sees with Allah's light. If one claims to see with Allah's light, then the disbeliever also sees with Allah's light. If one sees the earth and the sky, so does the disbeliever. If a disbeliever is asked, he would describe the sky and the earth the same as anyone else. But when the Prophet ﷺ said that the believer sees with Allah's light, it means that he sees what is behind the receptacles, al-awani. This vision comes from Allah's light, because he sees with Allah's light. It means that the believer knows this example of the light discussed previously. He understands the meaning of the light, the language of the light, and witnessing through the intermediary of the light. On the other hand, he who denies all the intermediaries should also deny his eye, because his eye is an intermediary with which he sees. Some may mistakenly believe that discussing the light aligns with supporting extremist or disbelieving movements. However, discussing the light entails discussing what Allah has revealed in his book. If one denies the light, deep sight reading the entire Quran every month, especially during Ramadan, then he should remove Surah An-Nur and Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah is the wali of those who believe, he brings them out of the darkness into the light, along with every verse in the Quran talking about the light. Sidi Shaykh added that if one lets go the temptation of belonging to something, Al-Intima, and the urge to favor one group over another, for example those who say, I'm not a Sufi, the other person is a Sufi and the other one is an innovator, Mubtada, and begins to think like a Muslim who hears such discussions from another Muslim, he will benefit from what he does not know and add it to what he already knows. If he dislikes something, he can simply leave it without it affecting him in any way. Sidi Shaykh Qaddas Allah Sarra returned to speak about verse 14 of Surah Al-Hujurat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Say, you have not believed, but say, we have submitted, aslamna for faith has not yet entered your heart. Sidi Shaykh explained that from this verse, one can understand that faith, iman, is distant from submission, Islam. Initially, one enters Islam, becoming a Muslim, and then faith enters his heart, transforming him into a believer. Then, with this faith, the highest example, which is the example of the light, becomes apparent and he begins worshipping Allah as if he sees him, which is the station of Ihsan. In as if you see him, كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى, there is the kaf of eminence, kaf of tashbih. Sidi Shaykh explained that when one says, someone is as if he is so and so, he is not actually him, but is likened to him. With the kaf of eminence, with kaf of tashbih, one comprehends this likeness. So one needs an example through which he draws closer to the maker, al-bari subhanahu wa azza wa jal, and perceives his closeness to him, subhanahu wa azza wa jal and becomes as if he sees him. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتديه لولا إن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين